So I'll get the chat. I don't know if okay. you see the chat. Okay. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. We have a really fun topic today, vegan travel, and my guest is from Green Earth Travel Agency. Her name is Donna Zigfinger. I hope I got that right. I practice whenever I had hard, whenever I have hard names, I always botch them, no matter how much I practice. It's Zigfinger. You got it right the first. <laughs> I had it right. See when we practice. Zigfinger. Zigfinger. Finger. Yeah. Zig. Index and. finger. That's what it means. Z- oh, really? pointing. That is, that's yeah, it does. It's actually in Yiddish meaning uh, uh, pointing of the Torah. That is so interesting. I'm just going to call you Donna, if that's okay. That's absolutely fine. That's okay. Well, before we hear about your fascinating business, which I have lots of questions about, I want to know how come you became vegan when, and I'd like to hear your story. So probably around 1981 or 82, 81, I went to work at the DC Animal Control. And uh, uh, there was a woman there named Ingrid Newkirk who was my boss at the shelter. Uh, She would toss me flyers all the time. (laughs) And I'd be like, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. You know, it'd be circus flyers, laboratory, whatever. And so it took about a year and a half. So in 1983, which it'll be 40 years next year, I went vegan. Fantastic. I, I didn't go vegetarian. I was one of the ones because you'd meet everyone who became vegetarian or pescatarian can you know and kind of does that route i just said i'm not i'm not doing it i made the connection yeah i I didn't go vegetarian first either because i was allergic to dairy so i I mean i guess i could have kept eggs in but yeah i'm fantastic that's wonderful thank you and back then they thought i had pointed ears and my parents thought i was crazy and it caused all kinds of family turmoil but we can do another we can do a therapy session on that alone (laughs) <laughs> that, that's so cool what's it like having Ingrid's been on the show a couple of times I really admire her what was it like having her as a boss she's tough <laughs> she was tough but she was good you know she got she got the job done she got me vegan so there's that no I mean she was very good to work with and she taught me a lot she taught me a lot about animals and shelters and she taught me a lot about animal rights and yeah so I was listening to a podcast that you did and it, it, it you said you used to be a dog groomer. I was for about 15 years. That doesn't um, sound like too bad of a job, actually. I, I liked it, but, um, and I, and I still dabble with pet sitting just to keep in with that. And I also do some other stuff. Like I work with puppy mill dogs. Um, but, um, I, I kind of wanted a human contact. I wanted like to speak to somebody. Well, you could speak to the animals. There's no question about that. But I, I it was, yeah, it was time for me to, and I love travel. That was my, you know, second love besides uh, animals and music. So, right. So it was just that progression that I went to and I love it, you know, but I loved, I loved the animals. Well, that's pretty cool that you combine two things you love. Yeah. And made yeah. a career out of it, no less. And actually, oh. yeah, well, I can talk to you later but uh, about this. But later on, I actually did a couple of volunteer trips with groups to Best Friends Sanctuary. Very cool. How did COVID impact your business? A lot. Um, it's still coming back, you know, and it's slow. And it's, uh, you know, it is coming back. People are wanting to get out. Um it takes longer to book things. So people need to be patient with me because I can't book something in a half an hour like I used to. Um, and um, so, you know, instead of something, you know, making a half an hour phone call, it's a two hour phone call to make a reservation or online or whatever. So it is, it, it, but it's coming back. People want to get out. They want to see the world again. So they just have to keep up with everything. And we can talk about that later. What about Green Earth Travel? What kind of agency is it? I mean, are you like a regular travel agent just specifically for vegans? Okay, so I start, I'll backtrack. I started in the 80s, like about, two, I became a travel agent in 85, shortly after I became vegan. And I had a lot of vegan friends and they wanted to support me. So they would all use my services and, um, 
then it got to the point in 1997 where I can no longer keep, uh, you know, my regular clients or the agency's clients that were not vegan and my business because it was growing so greatly at that time. Um, so I started Green Earth Travel in 1997. It's I want to say, I want, I would love to say it's totally vegan, but I get a lot of clients who are not vegan that have vegan friends or vegan family. Um, and, um, so they come to me looking for help saying, I don't want to go on vacation and have to worry about my daughter or, you know, or a lot of times we get all vegan families, you know, it's a big mix. That's interesting. What, who, who would come to you today now? What kind of client are you looking for? Are you looking for group book tours or just how do you help people well, with vegan travel? I, so I, you know, I do have some vegan groups. You'll see it on my website, you know, and we do like one or two vegan groups a year, but I love doing honeymoons. I love doing anniversary trips. I just had a couple that just, they're in Mexico right now. I think it's not, it's just a trip, but I do a lot of independent trips for people and I put them in either very vegan friendly places or all vegan places when possible. And if they're not in vegan places, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll find them restaurants they can go and eat at nearby. Have you ever thought of writing a book about this? Um, a lot. <laughs> Who was it? Somebody, um, somebody is actually, she's going to try and coach me, but I'm writing a book, but I, you know, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of time. Yeah. When people uh, decide to go somewhere, how important is it to the average vegan that it, vegan food be accessible to them? Oh, that's the number one thing. I mean, otherwise they're not going to go anywhere. So, but it's not only vegan food, it's, it's also, people don't think about this, your pillows, you know, because your pillows are made of, sometimes they're made with feathers, um, blankets, uh, toiletries, which toiletries, it's getting easier. Toiletries, a lot of times are cruelty-free, but, you know, sometimes they're not. And just, and, and just, you know, being at a resort that doesn't have all these animal stuff. So there's, there's, a lot to it, but the most important, I think, for most people is the food. Wow. Are there certain countries that are just a lot easier for vegans to find food at? Yes. What are they? What are some of the easier ones? What are some of the harder ones? I would say, well, India, of course, is one of them. Um, although in some parts, it's hard to do vegan there. It's vegetarian, yes, but not necessarily vegan. But India is very, is easy. Belize is very easy. Um, Costa Rica is very easy. I mean, the majority of the, you know, going back 20 years, I would have said you couldn't go here. You know, the only country you could go is here. Now it's like almost every country has become very vegan friendly. Um, some of the South American places are not as easy. Obviously, countries that we can't go to, like Russia, would not be an easy place right now. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones. There's, a, they'll come back into my head in a moment, but yeah, Belize is very easy. I love that. Does it matter what kind of vegan you are, how easy or hard it is? So what I'm thinking, you know, there's a spectrum of people, some people that are whole food plant-based, some people that are more ethical vegans, some people that are raw vegan. I would imagine as a raw vegan, wouldn't every country have fruits and vegetables, ostensibly? Yes. And I would, and I would say that if you stick with Caribbean islands, it's going to be the easiest. You know, if you go into these cold countries, it's not going to be as easy. Wow. So for me, you know, I've traveled extensively for 10 years. This was before COVID, of course, and, but it wasn't internationally. I found that in the United States, it wasn't a problem and that I could bring my Instant Pot and I could take Uber or Lyft and find a Whole Foods, but I've never tried to do this internationally. Yeah, I, you know what, there was a list that I just found on the best and worst vegan countries. And I found it interesting that the US came in, I don't remember how many I'd have to look it up, but US was like number 20 out of the most vegan friendly places. I thought it would be higher. Wow. What was the most vegan friendly Israel? No, they said India. Wow. I don't know. I'd have to look up that list. I could send it to you. And you can post it somewhere. Um, I just 
I think I posted it in my group. I find that uh, countries that don't, where you, where you don't, not that they don't speak English, but where you don't speak their language are more challenging. It, it can be, but there's so many apps right now, you know, that translate for you that it's not as much of a problem. And it used to be in some countries, there wasn't a word for vegan. You know, now it's changed. That so is it really isn't that much of a problem. It's just, you know. That is so true. Yeah. And I think about when I was learning Spanish many years ago, there was a word for vegetarian, but there wasn't a word for vegan. Right. And they call it vegana now. So yeah, they, I remember going to Costa Rica and they didn't know what I was talking about. So I'd have to say sin carne, sin leche, sin hueve, sin quesos. And I'm thinking, and uh, what's the other word? I, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I would learn the basics on how to say, I don't eat this. I don't eat that. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. Does it help if you use like al allergica or say that you're allergic if, if, to really get the point across that you can't have certain things? I haven't used that. Yeah. Have you used that? I, I, have, I haven't traveled internationally for many years, but I've used it in the United States because otherwise they put it, they put oil all over the food. So I say oh, that's I'm allergic. True. Yeah. Yes, there's, there's a question from Leah who's watching live. Well, what do you do if you're like a no oil person? It, it must be harder. It is, I, I'm not going to lie, but there is a tour company that I work with called Veg Johnson Journeys, and she has started, I think this year, or maybe it was last year, she started some oil-free tours. Um, also, um, there is a cruise line, which is big. This is big. Um, I have a client who has a heart problem, so she cannot eat oils, and this Oceana Cruise Line takes care of her and she loves it. So it can be done. It's just difficult. You Would know, you not, recommend that people try to uh, work this out in advance than just showing yes. up in a country and just pray that they're going to get compliant food? Yes. Because otherwise you're not, you know, if they can't, if they can't comply with you, I probably wouldn't go, you know, even if it's vegan, you want to go ahead ahead of time and, you know, check with the chefs uh, or special services and make sure that you can eat as a vegan because there are some hotels that still will not do vegan or resorts or what ships. Do you, what do you think that's about? Because aren't businesses in business to make money? Why would they exclude vegans from there? I don't know. I think they're lazy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How do you recommend you do this in advance when you're investigating a country? I had a, I had a client, a weight loss client once, and she was going, I mean, on a, on camels, like she was like, I, I don't know what the word is. It's not a safari when it's on a camel, but basically all she could take was a backpack. So you mean, as far as finding out if they can help you with vegan yeah, food? How, how, like, a, well, what, is there like an international number, like vegan 411? Yeah, it's called Green Earth Travel. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't nice. mean to promote myself. That was a little plug there. No, but, but that's fine. Know, that's that's good actually, to know that that's what you're. But, but here's the thing. Years ago, I was the only one that knew how to book vegan travel. I will tell you, I have some non-vegan travel agent friends that come and ask me, you know, I need, can you help me with this? And, or they take, you know, we've actually did a workshop uh, with uh, world vegan travel with travel agents on how to book vegan travel. So I would highly suggest that you talk to your travel agent because they do know now they, they all know the different, you know, dietary needs for everyone because everyone's got to, you know, they're gluten-free, they're oil-free, they're vegan, they're vegetarian, they're, you know, and they are learning how to do this, especially the younger ones. Do you think sometimes the more high-end a, a trip is, the more likely a person will be accommodated? I think, no, I think it's across the board. I think the food will be better. That's just my personal opinion. And that makes sense. That yeah. does make sense. I see a question from a live yes. viewer. Let me capture it. I have, okay. This is from Joyce. Is it possible to fully experience cultures and their indigenous foods recreated in vegan versions? And are people in those countries willing to imagine and recreate dishes in vegan forms? Same for concerns about eating all organic, non-GMO, sugar-free, salt-free, oil-free. That's a tall order. That is a really tall order. You know, I mean, I've been working with, there's a, there's tour operators all across the world now. So, 
uh, we did a vegan travel summit, which I'll get into further, but there are uh, people that are willing to recreate certain foods. There's a woman who lives in Singapore and she loves Iranian food. And so she did a, an Iranian workshop, uh, you know, so they're all, yes. The bottom line is yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dina, who's watching live, said she's planning to visit the East Coast of Canada. Do you handle that area? Are there any parts of the universe you don't handle? No, I mean, I handle everything, but I specialize in more areas than some. But in Canada, I have a colleague who is a vegan travel agent. And so if she messages me, I can, you know, hook her up to him because, uh, it's always good to know. There's actually a few vegan travel agents in Canada that I'm friends with. And Canada is very vegan friendly. Do you personally travel yourself a bit? Yes, but I haven't. Well, that's not true. I was going to say I haven't in the past two years, but I actually went on two cruises uh, this pa the past six months in December and then one in January. And I'm going to Croatia for the first time in June with Miyoko. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Is that, is that like a trip that she's doing or? Well, she's, she's leading it and, and, you know, I'm in the background helping people book it. So yes. And there are two spots available. That sounds well going. Just ha hanging out with Miyoko sounds fun. Yeah, it is. And she also has a trip in uh, to, to Italy. She likes to do Italy every year. So that one's coming up in September. That is fantastic. Yeah. Love it. Do you have any stories of vegan travel either gone right or gone wrong that you could share with us? Um, gone right. Um, I'll start with that one because that's the first one that came to mind back in 2000. So this is a while ago. I went to Kenya and I was thinking I was going to lose weight, which I probably needed to lose anyway. And I ended up gaining weight because there's a large Indian population in Kenya. And so I was on a travel agent, what they call a familiarization trip. And when I say that, that means that we go and check out. It's not just fun. We go and check out the area. We check out like 10 or 15 hotels a day. It's, it is work, but we do have fun. So I made sure that they knew I was vegan ahead of time because I do that out of habit. And I would get to the restaurant. And I would see a vegetarian table and I'm like, oh, there's my dinner. And then all of a sudden they would bring my dinner. I mean, there was, so I, I would eat two dinners, two meals. every time. That doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> no, it was good. So that was the good, you know, Costa Rica is another good place to go to that. I ate a lot. Um, I'm trying to think of a bad thing. This, this happened in the nineties. Um, I was on a plane on Virgin Atlantic and we were going to Scotland and I called the airlines because back then you called, you didn't go online. And I told them I was vegan and the agent said, oh, I know what that is. So good. We'll put you in there as vegan. And then, you know, I would always check with the gate agents and they said, oh yeah, you've got your meal, special meal in there. And they get, I get on the plane and they gave me what they called a vegan, <laughs> vegan dinner or vegan meal. And it had goat cheese throughout the whole thing. <laughs> what do you That's do when life. it's not right? Like, how, what can you do without, you know, you don't want to offend cultures, but what do you do if it's, if it's not right? Well, I mean, I kind of tell them, I mean, I, I just say, listen, I don't eat this. I, I can't eat this or I just don't eat it. I, you know, I just kind of push it away. But if, you know, if you do that, they're not getting the word out. So I tend to say, I don't eat this. I'm vegan. Can you get me something else? Even if it's an apple or a carrot or something, you know, something fresh, something that'll fill me up. And they usually accommodate. I've never had a, a real problem with that. Do you I will, no, I was going to tell you the story of my mother and I going to Germany in the eighties when nobody knew what in Germany, what veganism is, which it's totally different. Now we ate at Chinese restaurants the whole time. Yeah, that's a great idea. Do you recommend people travel with food? Um, they can. I used to have a family that would travel with their own pots and pans, um, you know, internationally, not just driving somewhere. They would they would take their own pots and pans, and and uh, but um, 
I mean, you can travel with food, but you have to be careful internationally because some foods are not allowed and some, you know, obviously liquids are not allowed. True. Uh, this Liz Elizabeth wants to know how can she sign up for one of those last two Croatian spots? Oh, she has to go on my website. She can message me later. Is this on Facebook? Um, YouTube. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe on Facebook. I, I see I, my chat is everywhere. I, I go to Twitter. You got people. Okay. So I yeah. don't know where they're uh, asking me the, the, this from because I have a little bit different screen than what you see. But yeah. Yeah. That's but YouTube's the best place for people to watch just in case you want to know that because then I get a little separate screen here. Yeah. So here, I just saw a question. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Randy says, you, yeah, are you looking for an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, after these past two years, it's hard for me to say I would love to be able to afford an assistant. But, you know, if somebody wants to learn the ropes, they can contact me. Uh, SW says, this is wonderful. I was wondering if there are any vegan vacations other than the cruises. So there oh, are. Yeah. Yeah, I have somebody who's in Mexico right now. She's at a place called Excare with her husband. And, you know, not everything is vegan, but she's been talking to the chefs every day and she's been having a fabulous time. And so, yes, anywhere you go, you can make a vegan vacation out of it. Right. You did a, a what sound I didn't know about this until right before we logged on, but it sounded really interesting. A, a vegan travel summit. Yes, we actually. OK, during COVID. I'm not one to sit around and do nothing and not help people or not help myself. Um, and so, uh, you know, at this point, I had already become sort of friends with some vegan travel agents and tour operators. I have a private group for vegan, uh, for vegan travel professionals. So I messaged them and said, listen, do you guys, I, I know that once we get out of this pandemic, which we thought we would get out in six months, right? let's start getting people inspired to travel. So in 2020, we um, organized it. We did it literally in like two months, put it together and had it for the whole month of January, like twice a week. Um, and we had something like 15 speakers and we talked about different parts of the world and, you know, ways they could travel and, and, um, so, yeah, I, and I have a link to that on one of my slides that we have. Um, and so this year we did the Vegan Travel Summit and it's on Facebook, by the way, you can join the, uh, the Facebook group. It's called Vegan Travel Summit. Um, we had over 50 speakers. Tell me some of, who, some of who the speakers were and what they talked about. So we had the guy from Stanford by the Sea. Uh, oh, I love him. Cal He's been on the show. Sid. Jeff? Yeah. No, we had Sid. Oh, oh Okay. So, um, and then um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, so we had Veg Voyages. Do you know if that, that's like the, one of the oldest tour companies that's vegan. Um, we had, we did a, a, a piece about cruelty-free travel, which myself and Jason from Vegan Vacations did. Um, we had Kim Giavaco from Veg Johnson Journeys do a, a bit about packing which I am the worst packer. I, I take huge suitcases because I need, you know, options. And she can pack for three months at a time in, in a backpack. I never understand how people can do that. Um, I'm trying to think of, we did a vegan Italy. We talked uh, to the chef, um, Tony Weston from Scotland. He was my first vegan uh, bed and breakfast that I went to in the 90s. Um, it was a fun story. It actually just uh, was posted on the uh, Vegan Travel Summit group recently. Um, I'm trying to think of if there were any other big names. There weren't any real big names, but it was big names in the travel industry. We had people from uh, the uh, Curacao uh, Tourist Board. We had somebody from the Israeli Tourist Board talk about vegan travel. And, and these aren't necessarily vegan people, but they, you know, taught us about vegan travel in those countries. Are there some countries that maybe vegans just shouldn't go? Like, I mean, I'm thinking like Antarctica. You know, somebody's doing a vegan trip to Antarctica. I don't know who it is. I remember that recently. Wow. 
I heard there's no spiders there. I want to go there because I'm afraid of spiders. Are but you I'm real? Here. I remember that actually. Yeah, I remember but, but you know, you can't, and what I understand is you can't permanently live in Antarctica. I think six months is the longest they'll allow you. And I think it's probably pretty cold. Yeah, that's I'm a I'm a warm place person. Yep, me too. And I just left the desert for this freezing week. Oh California. my God, I remember seeing the spider that you posted. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty gnarly, pretty gnarly. <laughs> I have that fear with snakes. I respect them though. I totally respect them. I just don't want to be near them. Yeah. Oh, here, here's a great question from Joyce. Talk about the COVID restrictions. Are they lifted for travel in most countries now, or are you, do, do they require vaccines? How, how is that working right now? It's, you know, each country is different. Um, some countries don't like the Caribbean is a free for all. So you can go there pretty much. There are still some of the islands that do require certain things and they change daily. A lot of the countries will allow you to go in without testing as long as you're um, vaccinated. Some aren't even requiring that. So you have to look at each embassy and, um, and look at it like daily or weekly before you travel because it will change. Yep. Let's see. Did you personally host the summit? Did you interview all 50 speakers? Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh I was tired, but I had some energy, but not that much energy. Um, the first one, I think I pretty much hosted. I, I was mostly there. That, that was pretty easy, but no, um, I actually was on a cruise. I kind of uh, made my friends do all the work because I went on a cruise in December and then in January. So um, cause some of them were recorded in December. So no, I didn't host, I did host like maybe about five or six of the, the events. Nice. Uh, Joyce says is organized vegan travel more expensive than regular organized non-vegan travel? I don't think so. I mean, okay. you know, so it, it just depends on what it includes. I mean, you've got these large companies like Intrepid Travel that they're pretty cheap you know, and they're like a mainstream tour company and they're pretty inexpensive, but they don't include as many meals, you know? So, and then you've got companies like uh, Tierno Tours who I use a lot for Italy and they include every meal. So it, you have to kind of weigh out the difference. And I don't think Tierno Tours is expensive, honestly. Are, are, are certain countries looking for more vegans to come there or making it more attractive? Yeah, I think so. Which ones are they? You know, you've got Germany, who's one of the most vegan friendly places. And Ireland is another one. That's my specialty, by the way, is Ireland. They, they, if they don't have a vegan option in their restaurant, nobody goes to them. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But, you know, yeah, um, they, they all want it. Um, so as I said, as I mentioned in the summit, Israel was a... Uh, one of the tourist board people came and talked to us. So obviously they want it and they're like a vegan Mecca, right? So they want us to come over. And one of the islands in the Caribbean, I'm blanking out on which island it was. He, he was from the tourist board there. And, you know, he told us about all the, you know, the agriculture and, you know, how, how veganism has come around. And um, yeah, so a lot of the Caribbean islands want us there. Do you help people like with other things that maybe not just vegan, but like I'm thinking people that are kosher, is there like, is there like a you for them? Um, it's a little harder, you know, if they're just kosher and they're not glot kosher, I can do it, you know, because vegan is kosher essentially. Um, but if they're doing glot kosher with the rabbis, you know, the blessing of the rabbis that I, that's not something I can do. Um, it makes it a little harder. Makes sense. It makes sense. But there are tour companies that do kosher tours. They're just not vegan kosher tours. Right, right. So I'm, but I'm thinking if somebody was vegan and kosher, that adds another level of difficulty. Right. But um, I would imagine that the kosher tours would be able to do vegan. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Dina says, do you organize vegan Costa Rican country tours with activities like zip lining, et cetera? Yes, I can do that. I work with a company that does Central America and she's called Vegan Adventures. So she, she 
mostly focuses in on Guatemala, but she also does Costa Rica and Belize. That's but it's for great. the adventurous. Oh, a oh, uh, question. Do you have a favorite vegan restaurant in Frankfurt, Germany? I haven't been to Frankfurt, Germany in many years, so I couldn't tell you which one it would be. Is all the all the uh, tours or, or things you organize is always international? Do you ever do anything in the United States? I did many years ago, and I looked at doing it again this year, but it just it didn't take off because the COVID. Um, I did um, trips to, and actually that's not true. I am doing one next year and I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, I did trips to Best Friends Society, which I would love to organize again. They now have a vegan hotel. They didn't used to be vegan. When I was taking groups there, they were vegetarian in their restaurant. And now every, I believe the restaurant is vegan and they have a vegan hotel right outside of the sanctuary itself. That is very cool. So, yeah. So what we did was we took people to go and volunteer for like three days and then we would go to the Grand Canyon and camp out. Wow. Love it. I yeah. love it. Hey, I know you prepared a few slides. Did you want to share them? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Here we go. Doesn't have sound, so I don't need to click the sound. You can be the sound. I can be the sound. So this is my company. You can like us on Facebook and Instagram if you're interested. A little self-plugging there. This is, I don't even remember where I got this cheat sheet, but this is um, some information on preparation, some of the healthiest airlines. I just, I just uploaded this. Veg News did a uh, thing on healthiest air airlines. Now I will tell you with the airlines that they're typically contracted out by different airports. So not all meals are the same. So while they're saying that this airline does great, that airline does great. It, you know, if they're going into a different airport, it might not be the same. And then you've got vegan meals. I, wait. Oh, okay. I just realized what I did. Vegan meals on airlines. Happy Cow did an article on that. Um, you want to say, um, if you're doing it online uh, for vegan, it's VGML. Um, they have Asian vegetarian, they have lacto vegetarian, you know, acronyms. So, but VGML is for vegan. So as far as the tours and uh, cruises, you've got uh, Veg Voyages. You can contact me for any of these. World Vegan Travel, Virgin Voyages. Um, Virgin Voyages is not an all vegan cruise and I'll talk to you about it in a moment. And then you've got the Vegan Travel Club. And then as far as the apps go, ha everyone, if you don't know who Happy Cal is, you need to know who, who they are because they list restaurants all over the world. Um, and what I would suggest is if you see something is to call them ahead of time to make sure it's still open because with COVID, a lot of things have closed up. Hmm. There's uh, an app called Translator, but you can also do Google Translate. So this app will speak out your desired translation for you. So if you tell them I'm vegan or, and I don't eat mushrooms, you know, it'll tell you, you just talk into it or type it in and it'll speak it out for you, which is pretty cool. Then there's the vegan passport, which has over 78 languages and translations that you can say no meat, no dairy, no egg, no problem. Um, there is uh, Wendy Wer Wernick. Uh, she is the nomadic vegan. She has a lot of great tips on how to travel as a vegan and you can get her book on Amazon. And then there's another app that I just discovered, um, which is similar to Happy Cow, but I haven't really tried it yet. It's called Vegan Maps. And I've been hearing good things about it. So just, you know, it's fine to try it. So let's do the next. So there we go. This is what you were talking about. There was different kinds of vegans, right? So there's more of a way of life. They're the largest group of vegans. Apparently they're one third of all vegans no animal products ever against all cruelty. And actually on the vegan summit, we did a, 
um, a, a workshop on uh, cruelty-free travel. Then there's the healthy vegans. This is you, AJ. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't always one. <laughs> well, I'm still working on it. So, but just because you're a healthy vegan doesn't mean you're, it, some of it is just about food for you, for people. So, excuse me, I'm getting a dry throat here. So a lot of, a lot of tour operators will work with them on that. And then we have the environmental vegans, you know, the way of living a greener lifestyle. You want to reduce greenhouse gases, pollution, doesn't want to support animal agriculture. And they a lot of times will cross with the uh, cruelty-free vegans. And then there's the religious vegans. So you've got live as a vegan life, religious act, Jainism, which is, isn't that the oldest vegan religion that's one of them for sure yeah yeah widespread in thailand and 33 percent of the hindus are veggie so um i put this up here because um we were talking about flying as vegans and so when you're making your flights you want to put in vgml as discussed as soon as you book your flights and pay for them you want to make sure because a lot of times now you're getting your boarding passes and checking in 24 hours ahead of time. You want to make sure that it's still in there when you go online. <clears throat> and then again, talk to the flight attendants when you check on the plane to make sure that they have your vegan meal. Um, driving, I put this in here. I don't know why I put it in here, but... <laughs> But I did do a lot of driving trips while during COVID. And so, you know, I found a lot of vegan bed and breakfast or vegan friendly bed and breakfast in the United States. Um, we would bring, um, we would go to the health food stores ahead of time and bring like um, an ice cooler and just stack it up with all the things we needed for the road trip. And um, I would use Happy Cow for your vegetarian, you know, vegan restaurants nearby. Let me know if there's any questions. I will look in the chat. I for sure will let you know. Now, this one was interesting. I really wanted to do this during COVID. And I actually had a friend slash client of mine take off two years. He, he bought an RV and he, you know, rerouted or refitted everything, you know, because it was like a 20 year old RV. And he traveled across the country during COVID. Um, so this is a great way of doing it. You can meet other people in RVs and in campgrounds. Um, you have your kitchen all set up for you. You know, um, I think it's a great way. We wanted to do it, but to rent an RV was very expensive. So I think if you're going to do it and do it seriously, you might want to think about buying a used one and doing it that way, because I think for two weeks, it was going to cost us like $5,000 because they charge, you know, per mile. And then you have to pay for the campgrounds and all this other stuff. So, but it, I just thought it was the coolest thing. I still want to do it. I have not been on a cross country trip yet. So it's one way to do it. And then you can do train. Um, I typically will do train from DC to New York, because it's just a cool thing. But you know, Canada does a lot of train trips. So and they've become so much more vegan friendly in the past few years, you know, you can get vegan dinners and lunches and stuff. Just it's it's just a lot easier. And Europe is very vegan friendly on the train trips as well. If you're in Europe right now. Cruising and boating. Well, we were talking about that. Cruises have changed a lot in the past, even five years. All the major players are realizing that there's a lot of vegans and, and they might not be vegan. They just might want to eat healthy. So they have changed the game and they've changed the game up to I mean, just it, the food is incredible now. So this is the brand highlight. Okay, so this was Virgin Voyages. And this was the cruise line that I went on twice. And I have pictures of my trip later on. It's 
it's a mid-sized ship. And so when I say mid-shot size, it's about 3,000 people. But right now, it's their capacity is running around 1,000 people, about half. You know, So you pretty much have the cruise to yourself. Um, there's 20 eateries. There's a plant-based forward restaurant called Razzle Dazzle. It was supposed to be all vegan with a little bit of cheating, but they kind of changed it a little bit, which it was a drag. But the food the, in each of the restaurants, there was always a vegan option. The only place that didn't have a vegan option and they know they have to change it was the Italian restaurant, which was weird because Italian restaurants, you would think they would have it. So I've been in touch with the uh, head of food and beverage, and he knows it's an issue and they're working on it to change the menu. But they had on that restaurant a fabulous vegan chocolate mousse cake. They also have fitness programs, which I took. I took the spinning classes. You know, you can walk on the deck. There's some stretching classes. They had a VH1 uh, Richard Simmons class, which was a lot of fun. It was really silly. And what's really weird is they have this thing called Squid Ink. It's a tattoo parlor with vegan ink. So if you really want that tattoo, you know, my, my friend, my roommate got a huge tattoo of an octopus on her shoulder. It took three hours. It was all vegan. Wow. Um, oops, I forgot. So those are the this is what I sat in the whole morning. I forgot to put those. Yeah, we'll, we'll skip the mo moe. I don't drink anyway. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of fun things. This is the Razzle Dazzle. That's the vegan forward place. Um, and yeah, so this, I will tell you, this is all on an adults only place. If you can tell by the name of the ice cream parlor, it's not for kids. Um, and they have a hair salon. I got a really nice uh, manicure there that it was more like a massage. It was great. All right. So then we have Oceana Cruises. And this is a small ship. This is, they do have a ship that's like 2,500, but most of their ships are around 600 people. Um, I have one client <clears throat> for the past five years has only sailed on the ship because she, there's, and she's been on every cruise ship. Um, they have over 250 vegan menu options. I mean, she was expecting not to eat the last time or not to, not to gain weight. And she gained weight on this, on this cruise. Um, they have a lot of extra amenities, um, the culinary center, the wellness discovery tours. It's just a really beautiful upscale uh, cruise. It's a little more upscale than Virgin Voyages, in my opinion. And there are other cruises, like even Carnival Cruise does a lot of vegan stuff. Now there's a vegan carnival cruise Facebook group and it has like 20,000 people on it. And they're always talking about different things. So, um, oh, I didn't go through these pictures again. Yeah, so these are their cabins. Donna, do you recommend when you do a cruise to, or any, any time you go out of the country to take the trip insurance that's often offered? Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, we can talk about that in one second. Because with COVID, I have, fr I have had clients that got stuck in Ireland last week. Look at that food, though. I'm getting hungry again. Um, all right. So we can stop here if you want for a moment. And I can, or do you want me to finish this? Yeah, why don't you finish the slides? So this is with... Um, uh, world Vegan uh, Travel with Bridie Reed and also with Colleen Patrick Goudreau. She, they have gone to Rwanda a couple of times. They are going to Africa again this year. This is just a baby gorilla that they found. That I, so cute. He's just so cute. And then this is one of my bucket list trips to do. Colleen Patrick Goudreau has uh, CPD, CB. Yeah, CGB trips. I can't, I can't get the acronyms. I'm really bad with that. Um, and that's their group when they went to Rwanda. One of my clients was on that trip. It was fabulous. Now, this is Ireland. 
This is my favorite place on the planet. I will tell you if you're going to, I thought you were going to ask me that. So this is my favorite place. That's one of the questions I have. What is your best trip? This is my fa- I keep going back. I've been at least 10 times to Ireland, if not more. I've spent probably months over there. I have friends that live there. Um, this is in Dublin. I think this was one of our first of two days where we did a vegan walking tour in Dublin. I'm not sure if they're still doing it. Um, but this was my last trip in Ireland and, and a different hair color. <laughs> so this is at the Cliffs of Moher. Um, people were saying, what are you doing so close to that, Cal? They didn't, you know, they were so laid back. They didn't care. I wasn't this close. But um, this is the Cliffs of Moher. This is one of my favorite areas. There's a city called Doolin. And, I, and it's one of the most musical, friendly places Ever, you know, they have all these famous people that come in and play at the pubs. I love this city so much that I named my cat Doolin back in 2005. And she has since passed, but it was, it's a beautiful place. This is in the Giants Causeway. I know that photo is not that great because it was really far away, but I just love that it's almost like love doves there. But this is what, um, this is what it looks like. It's really, I, I don't understand how they, how that happened, but it's, it's an amazing place. The Giants Causeway all these years I had been to Ireland. I never went there until last, last year. I got to hit, hit up Northern Ireland a little bit more. And this is my adopted girl, Julianne. You can, we took, we go to a donkey sanctuary every time we go. Uh, it's down near Cork. Um, and so the last couple times I adopted Julianne, she was actually born at the sanctuary. So she doesn't understand cruelty like the other donkeys have. A lot of them are abandoned, you know, or, or abused or, you know, without, you know, the whole scenario with animals. So she was one of the lucky ones, but she's very shy and she doesn't come out very often. I think that's why I like her because I'm kind of shy. So now we're back to Virgin Voyages. I told you, this is where I sat the whole time in the mornings. Anyway, I would just come out here and look at the ocean and just sit out on the hammock. Um, I believe this was when we were docked in Dominican Republic. This is the ship here, the Virgin Voyages. And for those who don't know, um, Virgin Voyages is owned by Richard Branson. So you know a lot of cool things are going to come out of this. He actually is changing the way cruise ships are being run uh, environmentally and every, every you know, locally, everything. He's, he's doing a fabulous job at it. Yeah, you bring up something really important. That's why a lot of people that I know, like that have been on this show, like John Pierre, just will not take cruises because of that. Well, there's no, I mean, they will even tell you, because I was going to do a chat with them on Clubhouse about uh, environmental issues and cruises, and they are very upfront saying there is no such thing as an environmentally free cruise. They just are trying to turn the tide on it. So um, they're trying to reuse their fuels, you know, it, there's a lot of stuff I could go into and you and I could do a whole session just on that alone but these were some paddle boarders and this was in the dr oh no this was in bimini in the bahamas there's the bar the bar scene down there and this is the food okay so this thing up here was actually um oh god what kind of it was a drink so i did drink on this cruise a little bit not a lot but they made it look like popcorn. You know, they had a little bit of vegan popcorn or they took out the popcorn for me because it wasn't vegan. They just put the drink in there and I just, it looked like I was having popcorn in a straw. This is a cauliflower steak was, which was amazing. I, I think this was like a potato leek soup. I can't remember. And this is gazpacho. And that was my favorite on the whole ship was the gazpacho soup. It was watermelon gazpacho. It was great. So was the cauliflower. Everything I had on there was really good. And so this is the um, the Facebook group. It's called. It was called Traveling in a New Vegan World in 2021, and then we decided 
since things had opened up, we needed to change the name of it. So we changed it to the Vegan Travel Summit Group. And we're, we'll be doing it again in January again, but we're also gonna be doing little mini workshops as well. We were just talking about that. Um, and last but not least, we are, um, I was talking to you about this before the show, we are um, organizing a vegan travel association. So it's a, a collective of travel professionals who support travelers and travel businesses all over the world that identify as vegan or plant-based. Um, and it will be for the professionals, it'll be a membership, but for the travelers, it'll be free. And we're hoping that will open up in the next six months. We'll have a website and everything. So you'll be able to go on the website and be able to find the vegan and vegan friendly uh, travel agents and tour operators. Nice. And then that's it. That's great. Let's see. I saw a question on a specific cruise line. Here it is from Randy. Does Royal Caribbean have vegan trips? Yeah, I was going to put their slide in there, but you know, I know more about Oceana than I do, uh, than I do uh, Royal Caribbean. They do. They have a lot. I've actually been on their overnight cruises. I'm not a cruiser either. So let's get that. I'll get that right out of the way. I just did Virgin Voyages because it's not like a regular cruise. And in fact, their market is to go after non-cruisers. But Royal Caribbean does have a fabulous vegan uh, menu. You know, they have a lot of vegan options there. Uh, that's where we took on our honeymoon. That was almost 30 years ago. At that time, they did not. They, so that's no. fantastic that they're. It's, it's really been in the last five years. It's been pretty recent. So, yeah. What? So, Ireland's your favorite. Are, are, are there any destinations that you're wanting to go to that you haven't traveled to yet? Yeah, I want to go to Madagascar. Um, <laughs> I was supposed to go to India in 2018. I ended up in the hospital beforehand. So, that's another one of my places I want to go to. Um, there's, I mean, anywhere in the world, I want to go there. But yeah, Madagascar has always been on my bucket list. I'm not sure if I'll make it there. Um, I'd love to go. Kenya was on my bucket list and that's, I've gone there. So now I, I need to go back. I love Kenya. There's not a place that I haven't really liked. Wow. Angela says that she doesn't like carnival because they don't limit smoking on their cruise ship and there's awful smoke all over. That's something I wanted to ask about because that, why is there still smoking allowed? I don't know. And I don't get it. I know with Virgin Voyages, they don't allow it in the cabins or inside, but I did go out one day in my, uh, in my balcony and I could smell it. So I think in certain areas they do allow it. But um, it didn't ruin my vacation because that was the only time I smelled it. Um, yeah, I don't understand it. Um, but I think it's just in certain areas that you're allowed to smoke. I don't think you're allowed to smoke in the main areas. Yeah, I don't. Kathy, is this question for Donna? How will we know when that free resource will be available? Were you talking about a free resource that you're going to make available? Maybe the uh, the Vegan Travel Association. Maybe you can clarify that. Um, I mean, if we don't know, we were just in the talks of it, trying to, we're trying to put the website together now. And we will also be sending out emails to people that were at, at the summit. Do you think COVID has changed the way uh, the like, for, for example, like, will there be a clause? Because it's, I know so many people that lost so much money on trips that were planned because it was a new, you know, two years ago, COVID was a new thing and they didn't expect to last this long and people right. didn't get their money back on and they, they physically were not, they couldn't take their trips, you know, it wasn't their fault. Right. right. Well, actually the tour operators and the airlines were fairly generous in my opinion, almost everyone I had. Maybe that they was, got that way, but I got to tell you at the beginning, they weren't. Not yeah, like, like the first month or so they weren't because they thought, okay, this is, you know, whatever. But when they realized what was happening, they actually started giving credits so that you could use credits up to two, two or three years. They weren't necessarily giving money back because they were hurting too. Um, I have my last credit person traveling this year from 2020. So it's what? three years going on three years um 
I and, and insurance companies were horrific as well back then, but they have gotten a lot better. Uh, yeah, I, my the first three months when COVID hit, all I was doing was refunding and exchanging trips. So I don't know. What was your question again? <laughs> have, have they, has, has that gotten more like where if somebody's going to take a very expensive trip where there's like a built-in thing now yes. that they can get out of it because not everybody... Yes. It just because you can travel doesn't mean you should. And not everybody is comfortable if we have another pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So the insurance companies will do this. Um, they won't cover you if a country is going to shut down for COVID. Um, they, and, and I don't think a lot of the tour operators either will, but they'll give you credit, but typically they're going to give you credit. And they, even the insurance company. So if you can't go, you can transfer your insurance to another time. That said, if, um, and this just happened to me recently to some clients that didn't get insurance and I hammered them to get it and they refused to get it. You, you don't want to get stuck over in that country because the U.S. has not changed its policy on, on not um uh, taking the test, right? So if you test positive before you come back, you're stuck in that country and you're going to be stuck with a big hospital bill. So the insurance companies will typically give up to a certain amount. Um, if you get their basic, like the insurance that I use is uh, travel insure. And if you get their basic insurance, they'll cover you up to $2,000 for it, if you have to stay there because you've tested positive, but if you spend like an extra $15, they'll give you up to $4,000, which in my opinion is worth it. It'll also cover you most insurance companies. And I'm saying this because this is a blanket statement. Every insurance company is different. They'll treat COVID like you, if you were to go to the hospital and you couldn't travel. So if you couldn't go, typically they will cover you. Again, that said, trying to get the money back is like pulling teeth out of these insurance companies. So it's not going to happen right away, but you're going to have to fill out your whole life, basically. Even before COVID, I had to use it when I ended up in the hospital just to get my airline ticket money back. And it took like three or four months back then. It takes longer now because everything takes longer. So insurance is very, very important. And you have to make sure that it will cover you if you're if you become positive, either before the trip or after the trip, because not all insurance companies are equal. That's and it's expensive now. Wow. It's you know, so it didn't used to be this expensive. But you, you know, if you're spending five thousand dollars or more on a trip to spend four or five hundred dollars is better than not. So Right. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, who said about the free resources, said, clarified that, yes, she was speaking about the Travel Association. Yeah. I'm in the next six months. It'll be out. Just you can join our list, our mailing list or go on the um, the uh, Vegan Travel Summit Facebook group and we'll keep you updated. I just joined. Is that where you're most active on social media? Is that page? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm posting a lot of the summit uh, workshops on there. So that the people who just now joined can see what we, we did in January. Wow. Well, I'm going to, even though, even though I'm a person that likes to stay at home, I find it fascinating and I join your Facebook group and I'm going to watch this. <laughs> I, I think we might so get you to go to Scotland. You know, you know where I want to go. Gosh. I, I mean, I, I want to do an, I don't, I don't like cruising at all, but I, I would do an Alaskan cruise probably. Cause I just, I mean, I've been to the Caribbean so many times and it's, just a bunch of water <laughs> you know what's really good if you want to do a cruise and you don't want to be on a large cruise and this is what my client who does oceana does when she's not on an ocean cruise liner she does river cruises and there is a company that is called v vegan cruises i think i don't i don't work with them but um you know they're like 120 people that would be an introvert's dream because cruise ships are just overwhelming for me. However, right now, because I'm an introvert too, I, I heard you talk about this the other day. I'm an introvert, extrovert. And being on Virgin Voyages, there was only 600 people on the 
cruise ship. So it was like we had the place to ourselves. That it's is fabulous. So cool. That is so cool. So what's yeah. next for you, Donna, either either in your business or where you're going to travel? Well, so next I'm traveling, as I said, to Croatia with Miyoko. And then um, depending on a few things happening, we have a trip in August going to Scotland and Liverpool. And that actually is on my bucket list, Liverpool, because I'm a Beatles freak. I'm a total Beatles freak. I'm a total Paul McCartney. He's my first boyfriend. Um, that's what I tell everyone. My he husband, doesn't he doesn't know it that, but my husband put a picture of him over the back of my bedroom, my bed. So, that is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I've always wanted to go to Liverpool. Um, if it doesn't happen, maybe I'll go anyway. And I, I want to go to Brighton as well, because Brighton's supposed to be fabulous. That sounds so much fun. Well, you are just so knowledgeable about this. So thank you so much. And thanks thank for you. being in. Yeah, it was been yeah. really fun, really fun learning about this topic. Yeah, thank you. We'll of do course. it again. Absolutely. Maybe and we'll fun. have you on uh, one of our summits. Yeah, I, well, what I'm what I'm good at is telling people how to travel within the United States if they have dietary restrictions and you know to get special food. I think I could I help people with that. And that would I, be great. Yeah, couldn't do it internationally because I haven't done it internationally, but I've got some tips and tricks if people are just staying within the United States, either by plane, train, car, or what else? Is there any I, foot? <laughs> right. Yeah. Bike. Yeah. You forgot bike. Bike. Oh, uh, <laughs> question. Are there river cruises? Are, are the river cruises in Europe vegan or are there vegan European river cruises? Well, that's what I was saying. There's a guy who has vegan cruises, I think is the name of the company. And he does vegan river cruises. Um, I'm trying to think um, if there's any others, but they're all very vegan friendly, like even Viking who I don't think highly of. They're kind of like the carnival cruise ship of the river cruises. They do a, a great vegan option. Um, there are some higher end ones as well. Wow, that's great. Well, well, we'd love to have you back. This is a really fun topic yeah. that people were interested in. So thanks so much. Thank you. It is my pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guests are doctor and doctor. They're married to each other, Chalwa. They are lifestyle medicine.